Hi everyone, this is Dan Elliott and welcome to the DokiPen channel. So we were left with this situation where we had this default resolution for the render targets, which worked well in some situations, but not so great for very large surfaces where we needed a lot of pixel detail. It would be nice to only choose the right size texture that is the best fit for the size of object we've hit. This would mean that we definitely get enough resolution but we wouldn't be pessimistically choosing high resolution textures for every object, which would blow up the GPU memory used. Let's explore what we have to work with. I'll go to the show button here and go to advanced and show the bounds. What we get shown is the bounding box of the objects, which shows the volume of space that the object covers. It's not the spherical representation, which is interesting, but rather the box itself as we can use that as an approximation as to how much surface area the object has. It's not perfect because not all meshes are exact boxes, like this cylinder here. But as far as I know, there's no way to get the surface area of a mesh, so this will do. Also, the bounding box surface area is a lot easier to calculate. So let's turn off the bounds display and go into our character blueprint. And I'll select this whole scale and squish section and move it out of the way a bit. To get the bounds of the object hit, we can again go to the hit result and get just the hit actor. We'll pull off a pin and in this spare space, create a get actor bounds node. What we get given is the origin, which is the center of the box. And what we're interested in is the box extent, which is how far the box extends from the origin of the box into the corner, which is the form of a vector. We can split this to get the individual X, Y, and Z components. Now we can do some maths to calculate the surface area of the box by multiplying the components together, just like you would calculate the area of a rectangle. So we'll multiply the X component by the Y component to get the area of one face, and we can copy the multiply node and multiply the Y component by the Z component. And lastly, multiply the X component by the Z component. This gives us the area of three faces of a box made by the extent vector. So let's add these three surface areas together to get the total surface area. We'll do that simply with an add node. But now, because the extent vector only extends out from the origin, that only covers one portion of the whole box. So I need to multiply it by eight to get the total surface area. Now you could have started by multiplying the extent vector by two so that it covers the whole diagonal of the box and then multiplying that surface area by two. But the maths actually works out algebraically to be equivalent and the same. Now the last thing we want to do is to modify the final surface area value because currently it's expressed in units, which is centimeters. And that will result in quite large numbers for large objects because it's actually in centimeters squared. So you want to divide by 100 centimeters first to make it into meters, and then another 100 to make it into a linear dimension of just a 1D length. So that's 100 times 100, which is 10,000. Now that's something we can feed in for the width and height of the render target resolution. But we can't feed in that length directly, as we want to choose a certain distance range and fit it into a range of resolutions that it can pick from depending on where in the range that size lands. We can use a map range clamped node to fit that range for us. It takes an in range, which is the length in meters, and fits it or maps it to a new range, which is the resolutions that we want to pick from, which in this case we will choose to be a minimum of 512 pixels and a maximum of 8K. 8K is pretty large, so do be careful and make sure that you can afford that for your target hardware. My machine can take it though, so I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. There's one trick though we can do here because the texture resolutions are all powers of two. So what we can do to force this calculation to round up to 512, 1024, 2048 and so on, is that we can map the powers themselves that I happen to know go from two to the power nine up to two to the power 13, and then raise the number two to those powers but before doing that, we do a truncate, since the output of the map will be a float value, which will give powers in between, and then the results would be resolutions in between. That might be something you want to experiment with and see if there are any performance issues 
with having non power of two textures. But for now, I'm just going to stick with these. Now, I'll do a quick truncate again just to make sure that it's an integer. And then we can take this new calculated resolution and feed it into the create render target node. I'll do a bit of cleanup and select all of these nodes involved in the calculation and put them in a comment block called surface area. If we jump into the level and test this out, then the plane looks like it has enough resolution. And the cylinder does too. And now the back wall does. And the floor. Just out of curiosity, I want to find out what resolutions are actually being picked here. So I'll print them to the screen. I'll just create a print string node and insert it in here with the value being just the integer resolution. So for the plane, we get a resolution of 512. Also for the cylinder, the back wall gets 8K, which is the highest, and the boxes get 512, and this medium sized wall gets 1024. So it seems to be doing an okay job. It's probably not perfect, but it's good enough. So in the next video, we'll get started with improving the actual hit effect itself in the surface material. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.